<laughs> All right, hello, hello, personal project. Hello, hello, NYP people. Uh, today we're talking about the personal project. Ooh, yay! Uh, specifically, we are talking about the planning phase. Ooh, planning phase. All right, so. If you check in your Google Classroom, all right, for your personal projects, all right, see, I've just checked one, all about the investigating phase. I've just checked two, about the planning phase. All right, we want to do the planning phase outline. Look, do November 11th. All right, this is what it looks like. All right, so there are basically these three major sections as part of this. All right, the first one is criteria. So criteria, think of them um, in terms of criteria when you get an assignment. Right. If you get an assignment for a class, generally you're going to get some sort of criteria. Your criteria are how you're going to be assessed, how your teacher is going to grade the work you do. Right. So for the personal projects, everyone has something different. So we can't just have one set of criteria for your specific product. So you need to make those. All right. So some things to think about when you're making it. Right. You have this setup. My project will have something, and you chose it because I'll evaluate it by. All right. So there's these two columns. This is what it's going to look like. This is how you're going to assess it. All right. There's a few things we should think about when making those, though. All right. So here are some of those things right now. So when you go through it, you should have quantitative and qualitative components. All right. So. Remember, think back to your MIP biology class. All right, quantitative ideas are going to be dealing with quantities. All right, so it's going to be a number. So things like how much is it going to cost? How much are you going to make? How many pieces is it going to have? How many pictures are going to be in it? How many recipes are going to be in it? Things with numbers. You should have some of those. And you should also have some qualitative things dealing with qualities. So like colors, shapes, quality, um, how other people might interpret or assess it. So those should be there. And then we're going to want to think about why you chose them and how you'll evaluate it. So here's a really good one. Let's say your goal was to go around and take pictures of Milwaukee in order to show fairness and development. So you're going to take five pictures of murals in Milwaukee. That's a good quantitative number. All right, you're going to take five pictures. Um, you can say then that's going to be the criteria. It's going to include five pictures. All right, you're going to say that you chose this because you only know of two and would like to learn more. Cool, it's a very manageable, achievable one, but it still challenges you. Um, and then how are you gonna evaluate it? I will evaluate it by counting the final number of pictures. Pretty straightforward, right? But you did both though, so fantastic. Let's get another uh, sample here. So let's say that one of your goals was, or your goal is that you're going to learn how to prepare a traditional Indian meal and document it in a cookbook in order to show personal and cultural expression uh, criteria. You want to include one type of curry recipe, all right? Uh, I chose this because while doing research, um, by talking to my grandmother that used to live in India, I learned that curry is an important spice in Indian cooking. Fantastic way to tie in research. All right. So that's fantastic right there. Um, it gives a little bit of that justification. Fantastic. Um, and then you can say, I will evaluate this by making sure that my final cookbook includes at least one recipe with curry. All right. So you can go check back, make sure that your ingredients list, list the type of curry. Perfect. You did it. Fantastic work. All right, let's look at one more. Um, say that your goal was that by December, you would research best sports, medicine, practices, create an off-season soccer workout schedule in order to show scientific and technological innovation. Um, you want to make sure that your workout plan includes static and active flexibility work. All right, fantastic. Um, so why did you pick that? Well, um, I decided to incorporate both because the National Academy of Sports Medicine says different types of stretching, also just different types of responses. Fantastic. Look at that in-text citation. That's fantastic. Um, so this is another one. You don't have to have an in-text citation for everything, but if it fits, do it. All right. Include an in-text citation. Um, and then how will you evaluate it? Well, every day's workout should include at least one of each. Perfect. All right. There we go. Those are three sample criteria you could use for your personal project.